will close or the airport at 4 p.m. Uh, to begin, if remote commissioners can please acknowledge themselves. Bruno Gleef, Winooski. Yeah, sure. Chip Mason. Great, thank you. Move on to item two, which is the agenda. Do we hear a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. It's moved by Greg. Is there a second? Second. Second by Chip. Any discussion or amendments to the agenda? Hearing now all those in favor of adopting the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? We have an agenda. Uh, next up is public forum. Nobody in this room is. Is there anyone here? No. No? Okay. So, no attendees for a public forum. So, we will shut that down. Move on to item four, which is the consent agenda. Do we hear a motion to approve the contents of the consent agenda? So moved. So moved by Gray. Is there a second? Second by Chip. Uh, discussion on the consent agenda, I think. Of course. Um, I think there's definitely a couple of things to talk about with passengers and air service and. Um, one of the things I'll start with is, um, you're not going to hear me say this often, but, uh, I will, when it is true, happy to report that I was incorrect on something. Uh, and that's my prediction for the end of the fiscal year last year. Uh, we, we were talking about a 630,000 past year end of fiscal year, which, which is June 30th. Uh, we did end up, uh, which we've, we've talked about in the past, but we did end up with close to 650,000. So I was, I was incorrect, but we were higher than uh, our, our analysis. Um, uh, I do wanna just uh, touch on a couple of highlights for our current calendar year projection. Right now we're projecting 655,000 uh, passengers. Again, this is calendar year 2023 ends. Uh, that 655,000 projections is if the remaining three months are identical to last year. Um, so realistically, we're, we're looking between 655 to 675,000 uh, passengers, which is a uh, 3%. Um, that's that's uh, projecting 3% increases for the remaining three months, which doesn't close out October. Uh, we're still collecting that information. Um, average of 3%. The average for this calendar year, each month, is close to 10% um, increases. Uh, the first three months, our, account, our fiscal year first three months ended at 193,000. Uh, last year, the same time period was 185, so we're looking at a 3.5% increase fiscal year to date over fiscal year. Uh, 2019, those first three months were around 204,000. This is 2019, fiscal year 2019. Um, so about, uh, we're at around 94% of that, which is equivalent to around 10,000 passengers. We're, we're, again, very, very, very close. I want to talk a little bit about JetBlue uh, and what that looks like in our projections. Of course, uh, you saw in the news and you and through some communication that um, starting in January, is that the right way of saying that? Starting in January, they will be ending service here in, in uh, Burlington, unfortunately. Um, of course, we have a very aggressive air service development program. We've been working uh, with all of our existing carriers and new carriers um, for years and years. We have great rela relationships, not only with our incumbent carriers, but also with new carriers. Uh, very, very excited to be working specifically with a couple of carriers that are highly interested in Burlington and, and hopeful to be bringing some news to you very soon. Um, uh, again, with JetBlue numbers, they they are typically less than 10% of our market share. One of the things that we analyzed right away with this announcement from JetBlue is how many passengers are ending their, their destination in the New York City area. 
Uh, right now, it's only 24%. That's, that's ending quarter two of 2023. So 24% of the passengers on JetBlue right now and at New York City. The remaining 76% of those passengers are going to Peace Square. So the, the changes in our uh, in that particular flight and and potentially with new carriers, it's very, very strong for us, not only on the existing carriers going through any of our routes to our destinations, for example, any of our Florida destinations. Again, specific with JetBlue passengers, quarter two ending, 40% of those passengers fly to Florida, um, meaning they're flying from BTP through JFK over to Florida in multiple markets. Uh, right now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven markets uh, through JFK that, that are the highest. Um, I guess my point being, while it is a tremendous loss and we have a great relationship and a 23 year uh, uh, commitment with JetBlue, um, we're not seeing the immediate and we don't see any projected um, negative numbers based on all the great news that I just reported with uh, projections for the rest of the calendar and fiscal years. Um, again, very aggressive air service development team, uh, especially bringing uh, Jeff Bartley in, into the mix with this. And uh, that's not going away anytime soon, whether Jeff Blue analysis or not. We, we're always continuing our, our uh, conversations to increase our numbers. That is all I have for you on the, on the, uh, that's your numbers. Mr. Any questions or comments? Uh, no, Tim, I'm, I'm just uh, so Nick. I'm sorry. Do you want to talk about JetBlue or follow up questions in the director's report, or do you want to field them now? I think it might make sense now. I'm available to either. So if you want, go ahead. Um, I, I guess uh, Nick, I'm wondering. I'm hoping can you talk a little bit more about what you understand to be the basis for the decision i'm yeah. i'm a little confused i mean i've i've read your press release i've seen JetBlue's statement i've read the congressional delegation letter so I, i'm sort of a little confused as to sort of well i i can read the english but there's got to be more to it than just you know there's an air traffic controller problem we're being forced to you know diminish or we're giving up slots in in new york that doesn't really tell me why burlington got picked instead of i mean i don't know how many flight you know jet incoming slots JetBlue has but um I, th I think that would help and also i'm not sure how enthusiastic I, while i appreciate our delegation jumping in depending on the basis for the decision i'm i'm not sure how much optimism to put toward you know, that having any effect other than answering the questions that were posed? No, really good points, really good questions. Um, uh, it, uh, while the Jeff Blue statement, and again, we, we do have a close relationship even to this day with uh, the corporate headquarters of Jeff Blue, uh, although I think the announcement could have been done a little bit differently. Um, uh, the reasons behind it are from our perspective here, um, well beyond the shortages of air traffic control. While that certainly is a reason, a, a portion of the reason, and that's a that's a very real thing. We talk a lot about pilot shortages, but specifically in the New York area, there are serious concerns with air traffic control, which is why the Federal Aviation Administration uh, allowed slot waivers to occur. Uh, my question back to Jeff Liu was, well, while New York is asking for decreases in flights going to that market, Burlington is still profitable. We're still seeing 80 plus percentage of low factors out of Burlington to JFK, but why not change that flight up a little bit? If you can't go through New York, maybe add a, a Florida destination or something to that effect. So I think there's definitely additional reasons behind the uh, the shift specific to us. Another good point is we're not the only one. JetBlue for us is 
and was the only JFK rather was the only destination with JetBlue. That was one route that was canceled with with Burlington. Uh, there were 13 other routes that were canceled around the country at the same time period. And there's there's other complexities to this situation. JetBlue has their conversations and active lawsuits right now with the Department of Justice for their uh, bid to merge with Spirit Airlines. Um, uh, just yesterday, their corporate uh, counsel was quoted saying that Spirit is highly reliant on this merger to, to occur. Otherwise, uh, expansions and or the future of Spirit Airlines, uh, which I'm uh, reading between the lines also includes JetBlue, could be at, at pretty significant risk for, for the airline itself. Uh, so between that, the, the competitive nature, the air traffic controller shortages, the, there are serious shortages with pilots with JetBlue, but also serious concerns with the um, Airbus orders that are coming down, that are going to JetBlue Airlines, meaning they're not they're not meeting their um, their equipment needs for the for the airline. So the, all of these combined, I think, is is really a, a perfect storm of what's happening. And then you throw the the numbers, the data, the profitability, the the numbers that we don't see into the mix, and and unfortunately, it looked like. Uh, obviously that we're on that list to be cut. I do want to say that we went through something very similar around three or four years ago, and our congressional delegation really supported JetBlue staying in Burlington, whereas, for example, Portland, Maine, they were not so lucky. JetBlue switched to a seasonal-only service. So, so same day, uh, JetBlue actually ended service in Portland, Maine for the season, so they're not going to be there for, for the next six months. Um, so again, lots of lots of um, uh, elements to this pretty complex equation. Uh, for us specifically, I think it's important to to for our customers, for our passengers, that there still is ways to get to Florida. And there's still ways to get to all these other destinations that would be connected through JFK, including international travel. It's the 24% uh, of passengers that are ending their flight in, in uh, New York City. Those are the folks that we're listening to today and working with today to today because right now there's there's limited options out of LaGuardia and JFK. And if you're on, if you're specifically a business traveler, that's where our focus needs to be to make sure we continue to support the, the New York market. Uh, and that's why we immediately worked with our congressional delegation. That letter, of course, was, was requested by us and uh, certainly supported by us. And we too would, uh, would like to understand some of those answers. Okay. Thank you for that explanation, Nick. Um, I, and I, I appreciate the statement at the end about focusing on the the twenty four percent because what I the first message I think I thought I heard was a little light different. And I appreciate you can walk and chew gum at the same time. You know, you're focused on potentially the forty percent that continues, you know, through New York to Florida, but not forgetting the the twenty four percent. I mean, I I can only speak personally, and I, I I won't for others. But you know, most times that I've traveled in and out of you know, Burlington over the last 20 years have been, you know, starting with JetBlue, whether that's ending in the New York market or or going somewhere else. So, I mean, I know personally, I have greatly appreciated that that flight and the opportunity, you know, it, it afforded to get either to New York City or, um, I mean, in fact, this weekend, I mean, uh, to make my, my wife is going down to see my daughter last minute, she didn't want to drive, she's jumping on a JetBlue flight and to not have you know, that availability and then to come back on a Sunday night will, at least personally, and I'm sure many are in the same boat, will, we will feel it. Um, you know, the train's not really there. Truck driving is, it's a commitment. So um, I, I appreciate, you know, you indicating that, you know, you are also exploring, you know, that 24% that may end its um, flight in New York City. That's right. And, and um, I don't, see these these suspensions if you will whether we're talking about delta or jet blue 
in the New York area as a long-term suspension. I, I truly think there's major issues that our federal delegation and the FAA need to need to figure out um, because everything that we're talking about, our numbers are good. Those cuts to LaGuardia, those cuts to JFK, the, all of those complexities with JetBlue have nothing to do with Burlington. Uh, we have the market, we have the demand, not just for the New York City area, but also beyond that. So it's it's very rare that that we would say something like that when a flight is cut. That this truly has nothing to do with the Burlington market. Um, and that's why I don't foresee these cuts as long term. I, I agree with your initial statement there of the probability of the reversal of the decision decision of JetBlue is pretty low. Yeah. However, we're gonna we're gonna continue to work with that company to make sure that uh, we're never uh, we're never lost in their minds when they talk about new domestic rounds. I, I, I just as a last, I mean, as a PR, and you're well aware of this. You know, I appreciate the efforts you've done to put out that like this is not our fault because you know certainly the public. Is sort of putting this in the category of, you know, there goes Burlington. What a shit storm. This is just another thing that, you know, we've brought upon ourselves. And I'm doing my best personally to, you know, deliver a different message, but um, appreciate you and your team continuing to do so. Great. We, we absolutely will. Nick, did I miss something? Did you say about Delta and the New York market? Did, did they announce something as well? They, they did. So Delta, both out of LaGuardia and JFK, have reduced their flights as well. And that's uh, their their uh, work with us is in their statements are the same exact reasons, although not specific to JetBlue, but they're same reasons with FAA air traffic controller shortages. Um, I, I, you know, I was an air traffic controller in the New York City area, and I... I saw it 15 years ago uh, when I was working there and uh, certainly have colleagues and, and connections that continue to to let me know that it is it is real. It is it is shortages. It is massive mandatory requirements to to work uh, many, many days uh, without a day off. Um, so I, I, I hear it. But at the same time, uh, it, it, the frustrating piece is. Nothing to do with Burlington, everything to do with, with a federal issue. But yes, Delta did, did also announce some reductions in the market. You said they had, they, they're shopping in LaGuardia and they're reducing JFK? No, just press reduction on both of those markets. But another important piece specific to Delta, uh, well, to any airline, in the switch over from October to November, every single year is a reduction in flights. So, so some of the things that were in the media are not exactly apples to apples when we're comparing ourselves to reducing our flights. Not all of that, of course, is, is the seasonality of things, but I specifically to LaGuardia and JFK, Delta also is taking advantage of the FAA waivers. Uh, this is another important piece, which I don't think I said earlier. This, the FAA air traffic controller shortages, the FAA allows airlines to reduce their routes with no penalties and no loss of slots. So it makes it easy for an airline to say, well, I'm going to reduce my, my flights to, to satisfy the FAA's request uh, to reduce air traffic operations in that area. Uh, without losing any of my slots. And that, that's essentially what's happening. And that's why both of those companies, at least a portion now, decided to, to reduce temporarily. That slot waiver goes until October of 2024, right now. So on the way, is it possible that the, the, the flights that you continue to have larger aircraft? And so could make up for the loss of passengers, fewer flights. Yeah, the possibility is there. Um, the next couple of months uh, don't show that on the, on the schedule. Right, the employment's rollover. The employment's rollover. The, the schedules are already in place. We didn't We didn't even see this. So we, we can see six to 12 months into the future. 
However, airlines aren't required to necessarily report that to the DOT right away. So we don't we don't see that until they immediately made the switch on that particular day, which was most likely a deadline to submit to the Department of Transportation for their slots. Uh, uh, are we requesting what you just asked, both across the board, whether it's New York's or not? Absolutely, uh, specifically with LaGuardia and JFK on the Delta. Yeah, just a, a process question. Uh, are, do airlines have a contract with us in terms of, uh, and, and if so, what are the terms of that contract uh, in terms of how long they notice they have to get before they pull out? Uh, 30 days. Uh, we do, uh, yes, we do have a contract with with uh, our signatory airlines and, and some country who has signed a non-signatory contract, uh, uh, but all the airlines are supposed to give us 30 days notice before they they completely uh, close the station, which of course JetBlue has. Um, uh, changes of flights, changes of routes, those types of things, there's really no notice required. In fact, this happens generally daily here. We will have a schedule and every single day we'll, there's possibilities that things will change. Granted, those are three plus months in the future. Um, uh, and then, of course, there's irregular operations that happen all the time that might end up bad. Uh, uh, a schedule or a schedule for, for, for uh, next week, for example. But changes in flights, schedules, those types of things are pretty routine. And just as a, a follow up on that, uh, what's the normal operating procedure if if, if uh, airlines is considering pulling out? Is it common practice for them to come and talk to the director of aviation and express uh, give them a little bit more notice or express some concerns? Uh, obviously, if it's outside of the realm of uh, what Burlington can Burlington can do, then there's not much of a discussion that needs to be made. But right. I'm just sort of curious if someone is unhappy, do they come and talk to you, or do they just drop the 30 day notice in their lap? Um, in the over 10 years that I've been here, with new airlines coming and going, and new even our incumbent airlines and going, I've never experienced an airline not advising. Um, any one member of the airport team. Uh, you know, to Jack Blue's credit, they, and although in hindsight, they did uh, uh, apologize for how this um, announcement was made, um, inclusive to some of the employees that, that were not given that. Um, so it, it, it really was that day that, that we all found out together. And just one other quick question. Although I don't put a lot of um, expect high expectations in terms of our congressional delegation doing anything under normal circumstances, uh, I do. I did hear that the recent newly appointed director of the FAA, Michael Whitaker, is a Vermont from Norwich, Vermont, and um, just sort of wondering if. Uh, if the Vermonters can uh, pull together here and uh, pull some strings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and our, our congressional delegation, of course, uh, supported his appointment into that position. Uh, I have invited him out here for a visit. I don't know if they'll accept it or not. Uh, but I also invite just, Steve. Just welcome to uh, <laughs> <I'm> January 7th. <Saturday. laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, I, but you know, you never know. And, and he is a Vermonter as well. And, um, obviously, he's new to the position, and there's there's some history behind slot waivers, air traffic control um, challenges, and things of that nature. Um, uh, it, it, to to your point about the connection with Jeff Lou, uh, most likely I'm going to be flying down with some of the some of the team here uh, to at least uh, talk a little bit more specifics, talk about the future of Jeff Lou, talk about their deliveries of aircraft all the way to air traffic control issues, and uh, at least uh, uh, pause our relationship, uh, let me say, with the handshake. Okay, thank you. 
Robin, I saw you had your hand up. Do you still have a comment or a question? Um, yeah, well, so um, I'm just wondering, I know we talked a little bit about the spirit merger, but um, there are rumors that, um, you know, that the the air traffic control and the and coming down from the FAA, I mean, they said they had to, everybody had to reduce by 20% out of New York. It didn't say where they had to go, as you stated earlier. Um, and some people are saying, you know, this could just be, you know, some some pushing on the the merger because of um uh what some see as just a un unnecessary delay in the merger and to getting it through and so if they push on places like us that kind of sort of have a legitimate gripe for being pulled out of completely then that pushes on the other side has anybody else heard any any of those rumors yeah I there's, uh, uh, there's, there's, we're getting an echo, I think, from you, Robin. Um, oh, there you go. Uh, that's I'm just going to Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, there's, there's a couple of things. So one is that, you know, specific to the air traffic control um, challenges in the New York City area that airlines are putting some pressure on the FAA to find uh, some faster solutions to that and, and get additional trainees uh, through the door. Um, and to your point, this this may be one of those pressure points. Um, and the the other side of that is, um, of course, the merger with Spirit Airlines. Uh, you know, I don't want I don't want to really talk about hypotheticals, but uh, JetBlue also ended their relationship with American Airlines, which had a uh, an alliance, the, North, the Northeast Alliance that ended so that it would help the, the merger process for JetBlue. Um, I, again, another complexity to this whole situation with JetBlue, but um, uh, you know, I, I, I guess my, my answer would be, I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure on, on some of those. Um, some of those rumors, but I think I think they're not completely out of line. Yeah, well, I've also heard that the um, so the yes, we're down on air traffic control. But one of the other things that's just come up in the last couple of years is that the just sheer amount of traffic has actually increased. Right, coming out of COVID, we went back gangbusters especially out of places like JFK. It's not like the slots change, but it's, it's really busy. So um, it's um, it, it, when you just look at the um, how to compare the air traffic controllers to the traffic, it's not like we just didn't train enough. Right. It's busy. And, and yeah. A small sample of that. Um, I mean, we see it here, right here, right here at Burlington too, where, We've grown and we're busier, and that required a, an increase in pay for the air traffic controllers here. Uh, but also, uh, uh, they're well staffed here at Burlington, uh, and I think that's because of of our geographic area and our our uh, you know basic place to live perspective. But um, yeah, I, 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 many many complexities. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioners, any other further discussion? We're all consent to the conversation, but uh, all in favor of adopting it, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Uh, we have no action items this month, so we move right into various construction of the Okay. So just to you know, um, we are finished in the garage with the uh, lighting and alarms of the season. Um, we finished the cell portion of, of the new lighting and the new alarm system is in. It will start on the doors when they uh, mobilize in um, April, March or April, I think. Right? So uh, also uh, contractor finished removing the corrosion in the columns near the charging area, repainting down there. There's, there's still the cause of that corrosion it has to be separate, but that's the first one of those projects that we can uh, do a big project part of the project that gets back on the, uh, uh, the, the uh, 
by a token. Um, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I provided a bunch of pictures of some nice prep pavement out on uh, Taxiway Alpha and two Taxiway Charlie. Uh, it's uh, substantially complete. It was inspected by us in the FDA this past week. Uh, came out uh, very well, especially with the number of pages we had to uh, make happen to make this project happen because of the uh, 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 terminal. There we go. Um, also, we had a final inspection with the FAA on the past the Boarding Bridge projects. That's complete. Um, the South Apron, and I provided a bunch of pictures. Uh, mask activation is complete. Drainage actually is now complete. Now they're starting to put in the sub basin um, right now. And also doing uh, some work near the beta. Uh, manufacturing facility pavement will not go down this year. It's just getting too late. Um, it'll be here in the spring. We do have pavement down there to the uh, manufacturing plant uh, for access for beta to get in and out to the airfield that they need to know. Um, I'm not sure how long ago this was, but I had uh, on the on the mission update was the glycol system uh, update or uh, upgrade and. Uh, all of a sudden, we were told by the FAA it, it wasn't going to be eligible. And so, my question that, and I said, hey, we're not going to give up. Well, we didn't give up, and it's back eligible again. So, we are uh, starting to consider a study of how we're going to improve that system. We already have an idea of what we want to do, meaning towards recycling. And, um, but that we had further discussions with the FAA, and that won't be fine to pull us back on our CIA. Quick, quick uh, question on that. Yep. I know that uh, excuse me, when uh, Nick sent out the information uh, earlier about the uh, Air Force, I don't know if I'm categorizing this correctly, but the Air Force's new document on environmental issues uh, and such, is this something that fits into that category? I mean, if they're saying that, that um, environmental concerns are going to be a, a, a priority, then it would seem as if uh, the, the military uh, would be, would help uh, usher in some sort of changes uh, within the FAA or, or whoever needs to uh, approve those things. Maybe I'm, I'm not connecting those two because I realize they're two different organizations, but there's probably a fair amount of overlap uh, and, uh, you know, the main emphasis, I, I guess I'm, I'm trying to establish is, although we got this document, I know that we mentioned this in uh, telephone communications earlier, I just, I just think that we ought to do everything to hold them accountable to this document that they put forth. And I don't know if this is an example of it. Maybe it's two different ships that are sailing, but um, anytime that I see an opportunity for that, I'm going to speak in favor of holding them accountable. Sure. Yeah. Which which makes sense. Um, um, specific to the glycol slash stormwater systems that Larry manages and the and the capital programs that uh, thankfully are now eligible uh, for some of those improvements. It really is separate from from the air guard only because this is for our terminal ramp and specific operations that that we have to manage. However, there are some overlaps with stormwater and other runoff uh, scenario, environmental scenarios that the air guard 100% is responsible for um, and would be included in their capital programs to improve and work with Larry and his team to, to coordinate and correlate back to our systems, although generally they are both physically and contractually separate. Uh, uh, and 100% agree. In, in fact, hopefully next month, possibly in January, the Guard will come and present uh, to the Airport Commission um, uh, both uh, their next steps to making sure that the MOU, the lease agreement, the future of the airport, the coordination with environmental to noise programs 
is uh, is their accountability back to us. When they rebuilt their taxiways a few years ago, they uh, improved their stormwater system significantly. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, a lot of things that we didn't talk about during those lease negotiations and public outreach was um, we're talking a lot about the $50 million that is on the line, was on the line without a lease extension over the next five years. But what we did talk about is the hundreds of millions of dollars that they did put in improvements over there for the airfield and buildings, including the stormwater system that Larry's talking about. Thank you. I apologize for no, interrupting, but no problem. Uh, your terminal improvement project. Uh, if anybody that had a chance to go out there and look, it's much more roomy out there, and that project is completely accepted for glass along the, the exit lane. I think that's still like a, a plywood there. It looks like not so good, but and that'll be glass. Um, so they, they're just waiting on the delivery of that. Um, the North Terminal Replacement Project. Um, uh, we're moving that forward. Uh, we received, we did receive an estimated initial cost based on a very preliminary. We're reviewing that and and uh, working those numbers right now. Um, so that's moving along with anticipating to have pricing by February of twenty four. Uh, cargo apron design the under design. SRE building is under design. Um, Tech Center progresses, has uh, been progressing significantly. Uh, I, I know Nick's working on the lease side of things, but they have, they, I believe they are pretty much based on our calls each week, got their programming down with, with regard to the inside the building for the Tech Center. That has to be reviewed by Nick and the FAA. Um, outside the building, the site related stuff for parking and school buses and all that stuff is, is at a point where it, it'll work. Um, so we're in good, we are pretty shape there preliminarily. Um, so it's now moving into final design and, and final lease and also FAA approval of the use. So, so that's good news. Um, the runway 1533 uh, design is progressing very well. Uh, based on our CIP, we all can also the condition of the pavement, uh, the runway and the shoulders, the, the, the pavement or the runway will only be done um, this time, and we will package the, the shoulders, which will meet the requirements to be done in a couple of years when we potentially do the uh, rehabilitation of 119. Uh, the airfield pavement management plan is almost complete. Uh, We're pulling all the numbers together on the condition of, of all of our pavements. Uh, Nick wanted me to also go through quickly what. I anticipate or we anticipate uh, we'll be moving forward uh, before the end of this fiscal year with regard to uh, uh, presentations to the uh, Airport Commission to bring the Board of Finance. Um, we anticipate that we will be asking for be able to accept a grant from the FAA for the runway 1533 uh, construction and the residential resident uh, project representative or the engineering overview. Of that project for approximately twelve million dollars. Uh, the North Concourse replacement, the next project that I just spoke about, we anticipate coming to you to be able to uh, receive a grant and issue a contract to uh, Inward Construction to complete that project. Uh, the grant will be in a, uh, about thirty-four million. The overall project will be closer to forty million based on our ten percent. Um, we'll also be. Moving forward, and again, we'll probably we'll touch on this in the sound or the noise portion of this uh, meeting. The residential pro uh, sound insulation project or residential sound insulation projects phase four uh, will be design, outreach, and construction of 54, 50 more homes. We'll be bringing that forward again. Um, we also are working on the potential of a, a separate grant for two additional exit lanes. Uh, you know, consistent with the new ones we just installed uh, at both ends of the airport. Um, and um, we also potentially are going to be uh, coming forward with a request to accept the grant uh, for some additional things we did during the term to integrate the buyback, which are now um, we, we, we should go get funding for. And um, the SRE uh, construction and our PR will be down the road a little bit. So. That's all I got.
Any questions? Mr. Dunn, questions for Larry? I just heard from the automated exit links that we've had right over a few months. Like, how are they going? Are they smoothly? Are there little bugs we're working on? How, how are they going? Uh, uh, I was gonna, I was gonna hand that over to Dave, but it looks like he dropped off. Uh, real good. Um, uh, from a security perspective and a monitoring uh, perspective, probably better than we definitely anticipated. Uh, we've had no maintenance issue, uh, like severe maintenance issues. Uh, the contractor, or the the manufacturer, has been really excellent to work with. Especially when we need them for troubleshooting, uh, cleaning has been very sensitive. So we we have to make sure that everything is cleaned uh, uh, very very well. But overall, I would say I would give it a an A uh, if if I had to score it. Uh, the reason that we want to move forward with two additional ones is for those very reasons, right? The redundancy, every, everything we do in aviation has redundant systems in it. So we really want to see that so that we can take one out of service, you know, for routine maintenance and still have a backup. We still do have personnel monitoring those exit doors uh, and eventually those will go away too. We really wanted to make sure the people and um, our operations uh, specialists as well as our security folks are confident in these systems before. <laughs> Which I think we're there. Okay. Thank you, Larry. And we'll move on to the next section. Financial update. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. So this month you have um, three all of the financial data through September of this year. So we are three months uh, reporting of the revenue and expenses of the year. The, the revenues are continuing to be very strong. Uh, they're $8.3 million. We did, uh, I included on here that we'll be drawing down uh, revenue to reimburse us for some uh, valid expenses, some uh, operating payroll expenses for the first three months. And we're going to do that from the stimulus grant. So that revenue of $913,000 is included in here. Um, but even without that additional revenue, we are still above where we were last year for our revenues. And so this is, I'm happy to see that the revenues continue to rebound uh, completely. And then as far as our, um, we have the Revenue recovery, which the only thing that is still a little bit not 100% is the uh, PFC revenues because those follow are going to trend pretty closely with employment. And if we were to exceed employment of 100% of what we were in 2019, then I expect those PFC numbers to also get there as well. But all of the other revenues, financial revenues, um, our garage, our James, CFC revenues, it's going to be uh, well in excess of the 2019 numbers. Our expenses are 3.85 million. This is higher than last year, but this was anticipated. We had, um, we've been working on, even though they mobilized, they demobilized, I should say, for the winter, the fire alarm and the garage lighting project. It's a pretty significant project that we're undertaking for the repairs of the garage and maintenance of the garage and make it brighter and kind of those things that come with it. So, um, those expenses are hitting. We're seeing that from all the work that they've been doing in this report through September. You'll see a little bit more of that in October because they just barely demobilized for the winter months. And we also, other areas where we're seeing higher expenses this year compared to last year are our salaries, uh, overtime, and employee benefits. So the detail is included in here. And a lot of that with the salaries is just we're, we're we have more staff than we did a year ago. And um, so we're gonna, this is, we have been understaffed for a number of years when we didn't fill all of our positions. And so now we are making, we did the reorganization, which we did add some positions, but also we are more fully staffed than we had been in years past. We're gonna see that continue. The cash and update. The, yes. And the cost. So what? And the percentage of salaries for increase. Yes, good point. And in the last, uh, both the last two years, the there were uh, COLA adjustments that are pretty much union based, but then the mayor often extends that to the non union members, and those are pretty significant. So we had a total of 12% over the last, we'll say, 12 months. 
that um, we had 7.2% one year, and then this past July it was 4.8%. So you're going to see that those expenses are going to go up just, just from the COLAs. And then as of our cash update, we're still in the very good cash position. We had just barely under $6 million at the end of September. And those are the highlights for this month, but I'm happy to entertain any individual questions that you have regarding our finances. All right, commissioners, any questions for Marie? Quick note, um, quick note on the active AIP projects, too. You added a note. Oh, yes. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Now, what is? Okay, yeah. So on the AIP sheet, I color coded um, sort of the AIP numbers and the receivable numbers and, and with the note being that these are AIP projects that we have completed, and there's a process that we go through in order to uh, wrap up and submit and, and be waiting for the reimbursement from the FAA. So we have quite a lot of projects on here, but a lot of them actually we have been able to finish in the moving toward that. So that is our, our spending, going to be spending quite a bit of time working on that. So when Marie talks about a $6 million cash on hand, number, there's 7.8 million that still needs to be reimbursed to us and 3.2 of that is coming relatively soon. So our cash position is almost double um, what we actually have dollar for dollar in the bank right. uh, to be reimbursed by FAA. So really strong. Right. Yeah, we have nothing in the can, so that's all. We have nothing for the can. Yeah. It's always right. available to us, yeah. which is a good thing. We'll start. So we get to that said like pay back We do. Well, we always have five. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. yes. So that'll that'll be yeah, that's one that I'm really very um, excited to get that process completely wrapped up with the FAA. Yeah. Again, that money back. Thank you, Maria. Uh, just a quick question, Maria. I'm just wondering uh, uh, your thoughts on the JetBlue situation. Obviously, in comparison to where we were a year ago, things are fine. But but uh, is that something that you're certainly concerned about and uh, and that could uh, impact, jeopardize the financials you know, six months from now next year? I think... Uh, Did you have a hiccup as soon as you heard the news? Well, obviously, you know, we're, we, we always, we strive, we want this airport to serve all, uh, all customers, right? And the more flights that we have, the more opportunities we have as a good thing. Um, I'm not overly concerned today because number one, I do think that other airlines will come in and have offer. There's opportunity for existing airlines, and I always think there's opportunities. Um, you know, uh, Nick is doing a great job at always talking to to, and for years talking with other airlines about trying to bring additional service as well as building those relationships we have with existing airlines. So I think it's a good opportunity. And I, for for other for other airlines to pick up and provide bigger planes, provide more routes. So today I'm not um, I don't like it <laughs> to say you know, but for a whole number of reasons, also you know, just for selection of customers as well. But fortunately for us, I guess if you're looking, it is a, they are of the uh, legacy airlines. They are the smallest. So United and Delta and American have far greater share of the of the market here. So I would be more concerned if it was one of the other airlines, I guess. But I mean, we certainly hope that we can work with them and um, certainly hope that we're able to, as an airport, provide all those options to people because the demand is there. And I think that that's very, very evident. So I think we're going to come out OK. Good. From a, a diversity of airlines to, um, you know, there's other Northeast airports that went through some extremely difficult times because the majority of their flights were one airline. 
specifically Southwest Airlines. And we can't allow that to happen at, at Burlington. So even, even with our legacy carriers, right, they usually hold between 20 and 30% of our market, not 70 or 80%. But when Marie talks about those, specifically those three legacies, United, American, and Delta, they do hold around the 80% of our market here, which is very consistent with what they hold nationally, right? We, we don't have the European model in the, in the United States where we, there, there is not a lot of competition out there. Um, and so working with the folks like JetBlue or other airlines, which are referred to in the industry as low cost carriers or ultra low cost carriers, is important for our diversification of airlines, but also um, uh, allowing more people uh, the opportunity to purchase a, a lower fare. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Rob. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I was I was actually kind of thinking the same thing, but then I was like, yeah, it's too it's it's so futuristic that um, it's really going to be interesting to see if the merger happens, if the merger doesn't happen, then if, um, uh, you know, other people see, you know, there's what, uh, I don't know, seven flights times 100, 700 people that have now been displaced and still want to go to New York and somebody jumps on that. So it's uh, really not, you know, something we can really look at at the moment i guess the the only question remaining is of of the airline do we get mostly um just like landing fees and and um operations or does any of the gas like from heritage flow to us and de-icing i guess all they love yeah from a financial perspective directly from the airlines we're getting landing fees and a square footage rental rate from, from JetBlue and, and every airline. Um, and then you have your indirect uh, revenues like our concessions, parking garage, uh, portion of the fuel and sales through heritage. Uh, yeah. Most of the icing do come back to us. Right, right. And we do get like you said, we reduce in winter. JetBlue's actually always moving around their flights, and then sometimes they'll jump on that Orlando flight or, or throw that up. I think that the biggest concern, especially in my household, <laughs> is what um, if they pull out completely. It's a lot harder to just adjust, right? Because now all of a sudden we don't we don't have a jetway anymore. We don't have um, gates, and we don't have anything to kind of you know nobody's holding our spot. If they uh, if they decide to return, you mean right. So the the concern being like they have gone up and down with how many flights they have, when those flights are. We've gone to Orlando, we've canceled Orlando, but by by saying that they're pulling out completely, it it seems a lot more difficult to just make adjustments down the road and go, oh, never mind, we're good, and still have a gate and a jetway to have everything to come back to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would mostly agree with that, but that's also why we're building the terminal for the future to make yeah. sure that we can accommodate quick shifts like this and provide some of the technology that we really need at the gates. So if JetBlue or another airline comes or America needs to use an alternate gate, uh, we, we have that flexibility through virtual networks and, and connections back to their corporate systems. Um, that's that's critical, but uh, essentially, yes, you're correct. It, it always is more difficult starting fresh, um, whether they're coming back or new carriers coming to us. Okay, thank you. But the good news is there's still 65,000 people on, right? So some airline is, I would think, is going to see that and be like, I'll take those 65,000 people, right? Not, not only that, and that's a great point, um, not only that, I think it's important you know, even though JetBlue is generally around the 10% mark, which is where your, your 65,000 number comes into play, uh, we're not losing all 65,000 passengers, right? They're going to be dispersed. They're going to be looking for alternate ways to fly, uh, hopefully fly out of BTB to that final destination, whether it's 
Florida or Roanoke or that. I mean, I have a full list of every single spot that all JetBlue employees have gone to for the last 23 years. Uh, so we know exactly where our passengers are going and we can market that to the airlines. Thank you, Bernie. Uh, we move on to item seven, which is the community connection with the developers. Um, we had six additional comments from last month. Um, and I don't have any other updates for you today. Richard, any questions for Hannah? All right, we'll move on to the seven. Oh, sorry, Hannah, is this um, is that a, the norm? I can't remember, but is that a normal amount or is that less than the normal I amount? Less. Yeah. Is that sizably less? What would you say is a so. normal? Um, I um, break it out by a month in the future. That's helpful. Um, I think probably anywhere from like 20 to 50 um, would be kind of an average. So, so that's yeah. quite a bit less. Yeah. And that. That's for the last month, basically October, or is that for September? Is that like? Um, from the last time I reported, so I uh, don't have it in front of me, but I did um, think you mean that the total comments listed? Yeah. That's from the beginning, so that's uh, June of 2021, beginning of June, when we had these online um, through the present, through the end of uh, uh Last last Friday, yeah, whenever. Just I just to know. clarify that the nine that you mentioned in terms of the last amount. From the last time I reported. Yes, so that, so that's basically a month. Yeah. I just find that uh, surprising in light of the recent public meetings and such. I would have guessed that people would have just jacked that number up, uh, you know, just prior to that the public meeting about the lease extension. Uh, and so that's, but, but it's a very positive number. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that, uh, that that is the case for the people trying to hijack the number for other personal interests. Uh, go ahead, Brent. Hi, yeah, thanks. Um, I wanna, be cautious and um, make sure the commission is cautious to read too much into the numbers. I think rather it shows um, there's potential that it just shows fatigue that folks don't feel like they're being heard or that any action will be taken. So if anything, I think it feels um, to many folks that they're just yelling into the wind and the jet noise is drowning out their complaints. So just because it's down, I wouldn't cautious that that is a positive indicator. Um, we don't have enough data to suggest what it correlates to or does not correlate to. You're absolutely right, Ben. That, that's a good point. Absolutely right. All right, we'll move on to item 7.2, which is Larry's portion. You guys have a time is waiting program, uh, noise update. Um, as you, everybody knows, there's a we're moving through the first 15 homes. Um, as of last back Thursday, uh, there were a few homes uh, that finished with exception to some storm doors that are moving on delay. Um, we're getting positive feedback from all the homeowners. Uh, they can already feel the difference with regard to noise in our homes. Periods um, there will be more interest when you report from other people because it, it, it was a good process. It's been a good process of putting it together, of taking part. Um, I day last Thursday, uh, myself and Kirk went to a noise conference in Dallas, Texas last week and learned more about what we're doing here with respect to noise and sound insulating programs of, and what other airports are doing from uh, London to uh, New Zealand, everywhere. So, but very informative, uh, moving forward with that. Um, I know Nick might have some pictures to show later of the, the homes that are done. And um, we are outreaching to the next 50 homes. Um, and also uh, as part of this and as part of my construction report, I put in all the project, uh, proposed project worksheets we have for next year's grant that happened in the last 
but also, so we projected out that uh, we'd be doing the same uh, 50 outreach and 50 home construction. However, there are other potential opportunities that are looking good for applications for other monies in February, which I'm sure Nick's gonna touch on. So that might change that up a little bit and we might be able to advance this program if we're successful. Um, Noise so exposure map, we, um, we had our, uh, TAC meeting, uh, that went fairly well, um, and that's for that. That's all I got. Uh, for our noise exposure map, we are still on schedule to host a few more technical advisory committee meetings, as well as some public engagement meetings, both locally in South Burlington and in Winooski, um, to explain the map process, but also to um, prepare for our publication of our new map, which right now we're on track for uh, around May, June timeframe for a new noise exposure time. And the funding that Larry is talking about is also the funding that was committed to as part of the memorandum of understanding with Meyer National Guard is to help with additional Department of Defense funding to access close to $19 million in digital funding to support uh, the down insulation construction program. And we're getting set up to apply for as much as we can. And from what we can see, our program is advanced beyond any of, anybody else that would be seeking these funds. Go ahead, Brent. Thanks. Um, yeah, I. I was happy to have a chance to attend the recent technical advisory committee meeting in October. Um, I know that uh, there aren't any other meetings posted on the BTV Sound website for that um, TAC committee. Um, it'd be great to uh, get an email once once that meeting information is updated. Perfect. Yeah, we don't have we don't have a date just yet, but as soon as we do, we'll have uh, many weeks notice both to the the committee members, and then we'll be posting both the materials, uh, Zoom links, etc., for for folks to attend physically or or digital. Yeah, also, I appreciate. I'm sorry. One other quick thing: we will be updating the mapping to show the outreach that we're, that we're going through right now. It's it's, it's developing, so we can have something to show. So Great. Um, I also connected with our city manager afterwards, and uh, she mentioned that she wasn't able to stay for the whole meeting. I was wondering if there um, is any other kind of delegate process um, that makes sense to the commission. Um, you know, if the city manager isn't able to attend, um, who she might want to delegate or who you may want to name as a alternate if uh, if she's not able to attend for the full meeting or for the whole meeting. Yeah, it really is um, um, up to the representative of the, the seat that it, it, it fills. Um, this isn't a subcommittee of the airport commission. This is uh, just a, an advisory committee as part of our, our process, which is, um, uh, not required, but uh, uh, recommended by the Federal Aviation Administration. So if, for example, the Winooski representative can come, very easily interchangeable with any any other representative of Winooski. Great. I just make sure before I um, re uh, revisit the conversation with the, with the city manager that the commission doesn't have any problem with that and it doesn't have to be a thing. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I mean, there really is no re relation. It's not a representative of the commission, so yeah. Uh, okay. Great. My, the way we we did it before was I was the chair, the the director of aviation was the chair of the the committee, but that absolutely makes makes sense. Okay, I'd rather ask than assume. So thank you. Right. That's all I have right now. Commissioner, okay. anything else for later? Just going to share the screen. Yep. 
And the folks online see the the screen. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, so just a, a quick, uh, quick update for you. First of all, uh, welcome to the Patrick Leahy Burlington International Airport. Um, we had an awesome event. Um, I don't remember how many weeks ago or days ago it was. <laughs> it, felt, it felt like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, Jeff is going to talk a little bit more about it, but uh, obviously very excited to share with you and during the commission meeting our brand new logo, our brand new name. Um, and thank you both in spirit and physically for uh, for um, supporting this event. And uh, I think uh, we had a blast uh, to take it away. Yeah, I mean, it was a great event on uh, October 19th. Uh, it's the first event that I worked on and really there's not one person on the airport team uh, from our maintenance team and operations that didn't touch in. Um, in some capacity, uh, so it really came together. Uh, it was a good uh, crew effort. Uh, we were disappointed. A uh, big friend of the airport, Bruce Wayne, did not make an appearance, uh, but Batman did. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think the center was very happy. And those displays right now are up uh, over the tip right now, uh, so we are uh, reutilizing um, the backdrop that Nick is standing in front of, and we have three of those uh, you know, logo displays as well throughout the airport. So we're really working now with Spaghetti Stripes um, and 49 to complete the rebranding of sorts um, and try to get everything, but it's gonna be a process. Um, we're, uh, we're gonna kind of tag team this uh, between Jeff and I, but uh, Project Next, Larry explained a little bit more of it. Uh, I am very, very excited about kind of the next steps, like Larry said, we're going through some of the financial details, both from a local share, a non-eligible share, as well as what we are pushing for a um, as much of a, an FAA grant as possible up to our maximum um, appropriation, which is the $34 million of federally funded. Uh, so we, we are coming back with the, uh, to you over the next uh, couple of months, uh, a couple of times to talk about both the financial piece, the design piece, and and of course the contractual approvals that we need to to move this forward. Um, uh, but really exciting, we're we're getting uh, both TSA approvals on many of the items. Dave Carmen, which I'm not sure if he's on uh, anymore or not, but he's he's been do, been doing a lot of work with his team to make sure our initial concepts. Um, are approved uh, initially by the TSA, uh, FAA. So uh, lot, lots of great things happening with the tip. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you want to add any anything more to that. Yeah, we've been working uh, with TSA. We just had a meeting today, actually, with TSA regarding that. So to to make sure the uh, you know the access uh, points to, to, into the new area are to their satisfaction, you know, things like that, to make sure that uh, TSA is. Uh, happy with the way we're going about it. So, well, one of the Thanks. really great wins that Dave was able to secure successfully was our rooftop event space. Uh, initially, we thought we were going to need some pretty big barriers around there, uh, but TSA is approved initially, and um, we, we still have a lot, some work to do, but has approved our concept <laughs> no barriers. Um, so that view up on that top floor deck is is going to look very spectacular without a screen. Oh yeah. Uh, I all right, I'll, uh, Jeff is going to talk about the next few here. Yeah, uh, we're very happy. Uh, we uh, were were the number eight slot uh, USA Today Best Small Airport. We started at twenty. Uh, we don't want to divulge all our get out the vote efforts that we did, but uh, we had a lot of people voting daily on multiple tablets, uh, incognito, uh, uh, multiple uh, browsers uh, to get us across. Uh, so it was kind of fun to to see the, um, the unveiling in next office. Um, so we'll be using that on a lot of the press releases, et cetera. Uh, on November 9th, Marie, Nick and I were headed down to DC for the day. Uh, we are sponsoring, uh, not just attending uh, the Taste of uh, Vermont event, 
Uh, Senator Leahy held uh, this event on DC for many years. Uh, he worked with the Lake Champlain Chamber upon his retirement. It was kind of up in the air. Uh, who was going to take it on? Um, and Senator Sanders is. Uh, he's working with the uh, Vermont small business, small business for responsibility. I think is what they're called. Um, and so they're doing that. So we're excited about that event. Um, and then on the 15th of November, um, I'll be presenting to the Hill of Burlington Destination BTB um, event, along with several other uh, presenters. Uh, most of the topics will be uh, recent airport updates, where we're going, uh, some cool data stuff that we're working on as well. So pretty excited about that. Um, and then next one, 11. Yeah, and in, what is that, 12 days, 11 days, uh, headed over to London. Uh, again, to speak at the International Airport Summit um, with the Federal Airport Authority of China, the Federal Airport uh, Authority of Nigeria. Uh, Copenhagen Airport is monitoring the session that I'm uh, in, which is about uh, the growth of the, the increased population traveling through airports and some of the constraints um, that airports have from large hub all the way down to so on, small hub. Uh, which is uh, very in line with what our experience is, making sure we uh, build for the future, both from a technology standpoint and a sustainability standpoint. So very, very excited about it. Uh, uh, Marie touched base a little bit on this with our reorganization through, our finan through the financial report. Uh, we are starting to interview starting next week for uh, two new manager positions, our manager of facility, excuse me, of properties, and our manager of customer experience. Both of those, uh, we're going to go through uh, very competitive uh, applications so over the next couple, really over the next month, um, and also make, uh, make some offers. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, the final piece here is just a really huge thank you to and not just the folks in this room, but also, and Dave, uh, but also the teams that, that support that because we had a, a very aggressive construction season. We got a lot done, both on big projects that Larry talks about with our capital program, all the way to the the smaller ones, like painting, uh, like painting our our airplanes that, that, you, that come into the airport, all the way to um, putting our brand new banners out uh, on the front uh, of the airport, you'll, you'll notice that um, all of our destinations that we offer are now proudly displayed uh, colorfully um, as you drive through our entrance. Uh, this will be a seasonal rotation of banners, so we have a, a couple things coming down the pipelines, but you'll see this uh, certainly for the next uh, many, many months, uh, which is just really beautiful. This was um, designed and provided by RV Severance. So really, really excited that that will also um, come into the airport over top of our mezzanine area uh, over the next month or so. Uh, but all of this could have been done without uh, an awesome um, team. Uh, ambassadors, maintenance, operations, they all have um, a, a critical role to play to making sure that this all gets done. So thank you to all of our employees, which is why we hosted a, a pretty amazing all airport wide employee barbecue. Uh, Jeff and I were on the grills. Uh, uh, the whole team was uh, helping serve um, all of our amazing partners from airlines to rental cars to air guard to heritage aviation. Uh, I think our count was we grills. 175 hamburgers and over 125 hot dogs. We smell like smell like these for days. <laughs> yeah, it's a replace our lanyards. It wouldn't come at all. But it was a lot of fun. You can see, uh, literally, there's probably a dozen uh, entities represented in just these pictures right here. Um, and just a couple things to put on your radar as well um, is uh, tentatively November 30th. Um, we're working with Mama Ma. Uh, they're putting in their brand new uh, first. Uh, production of uh, their new model on display, um, and that will be in the tip. Uh, we're still working on details and timing of all that, uh, but it's a beautiful, huge display. Um, it's two parts where we'll have a model of a unit like we already have two of, um, and then there'll be down the road a separate breastfeeding unit and some kid fun zone areas. Uh, so if you have multiple kids, they have a place to play well, uh, they're uh, breastfeeding and so forth. And then our two other ones are being. Um, 
rebranded and rewrapped um, as well. Um, that'll come probably in 2024. But the new unit is being installed on Monday at nine o'clock. Um, we should be done by six hours. That's all I have for you. Uh, I'll leave you with again our awesome new logo. I love it. All right, Commissioners, anything for your deck? Um, yeah, I had the chance to attend the event. It, it really was um, pretty wonderful, pretty amazing. Um, chatting with folks afterwards, uh, just thought that <laughs> they they didn't they they were really surprised at, at the amount of energy you brought to uh, to your speech, Nick. Um, they really <laughs> really appreciate. It. Wouldn't be a surprise, <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Um, it was really well executed. Um, everything from, you know, soup to nuts went really seemed to go really well, at least from the attendee side of things. And honestly, you saved the day by, uh, preventing the, one of the displays from being oh. blown over by the wind. Um, you know, so <laughs> um, all around a winner. <laughs> Do we have the hands, like, when the guys are downstairs? Yes. Security numbers. Anybody else staff holding them? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for Nick? All right. So uh, we'll move on to item nine, which is commissioner items. I didn't see any in advance, but are there any topics that any commissioner would like to discuss at this time? So seeing that, we... oh, oh, sorry about it. Go ahead. Sorry, guys, I'm a little bit slow on the draw <laughs> with the hand thing. Um, uh, yeah, and forgive me for not getting in the that first seven minutes. I teach from two to four fifty on Wednesday, so I'm always having to pass off to the co teacher and and run out and try to find a way to get on. So um, next semester it's going to be better. I don't have any afternoon classes, so. Um, but um, I, I just I did want to express a concern that we weren't able to get on a quorum and discuss um, the the lease for the guard before. Um, it went to city council. Uh, I realized that the timing was super weird because it came in 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 the middle. It is, you know, because they moved the meeting. So we didn't it wasn't going to fall on one of our regular scheduled meetings. But I was very disappointed that we couldn't get a quorum to at least have a conversation that um, uh, it seems to be potentially the most important conversation we're going to have for the next 25 years and is obviously a, a deep concern to our, you know, our community that, that we represent by being here. So, um, you know, I strongly suggest that that in the future, I mean, they're, 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 actually, this is never going to come up again. <laughs> but um, when, when we have things that are, you know, this important, I, I just feel like we should be able to to get to the table in in some form and and have a conversation that we can bring back to the community members that we serve. Thank you, Robin. Anyway, go ahead, Chip. Um, thank you. I'll thank you, Robin, for bringing that up. That I, I intended to do so and forgot. Um, I'll sort of echo. I mean, as a former city councilor, I can't stress. It's important, I think, to hear from the airport commission, which um, really does have primary, even though it's ultimately the call of the council. Um, I, I do think it was a missed opportunity for this body to weigh in on something that will have a 25 year impact. Um, I also and I did forgive me, Nick, I, I have a relationship with the mayor based on my service. And I, I do think there was a little bit of a miscommunication and I, I chided their office for sort of getting it to us at the last minute. Mm -hmm. Of course, the call for a special meeting. Um, and and he, not surprisingly, wasn't aware of that. So it is what it is. You know, hopefully that doesn't happen again. But um, I, I do regret that this body was not able to, to weigh in um, through, you know, getting at least a quorum of us um, at a table to have the discussion. So it is what it is. But I, I hope we don't face a situation um, in the future. 
All right, thank you, Chad. Does anyone else want to weigh in on that topic? Okay. Well, I, I agree with the comments that were made. Um, and I'm just wondering, uh, Nick, if you can talk more about the, the process of how the entire situation arose. I know that you made uh, a huge effort to, to write up some information, send that out, uh, and did some follow-up phone calls. And I appreciate all that effort. Uh, but it just, it just seemed like it was a really rushed uh, process. And I, I'm not sure why it was that way. I'm still, I, I'm just thinking that if something does have an impact for that long in the future, it seems as if people would have known about it uh, in the future, or at least in this situation in the past, and we could have had an opportunity to, to chime in on our regular meeting. I guess what, what I'm saying is, I, I just find it shocking that the, that that wasn't on the agenda in our October meeting. I mean, that was one of the reasons why we moved the meeting schedule to the first of the month so that we would have an opportunity to discuss these things before they went to the commission. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not pointing fingers because I have the most updue respect for you. And I knew I know that you would never try to do something that did, was not transparent. And I don't, and, you know, and at the same time, we don't have a lot of power to, to block decisions either. But it is bothersome when something is that important and we don't have an opportunity to hear about it until it seems as if it's a done deal. Sure. Um, of course, if I have the information and the final negotiated document, I will always bring that document to this this commission uh, for your recommendation for, for approvals. Um, it was a very high priority of the administration to bring this forward at that October 23rd meeting. Um, and that's why I made a, a very concerted effort prior to media input uh, to get this in front of you via uh, uh, textual uh, format as well as um, any verbal communication or questions uh, as well as uh, working with with this board to offer her some some timeline for a special uh, meeting uh, which we were prepared to, to do if if, uh, if there was that forum um, again this this was um, uh, negotiated and discussed over many, 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 many weeks, if not months, uh, as many contracts are. Um, and there were some decisions made that, uh, re and not just decisions, but information uh, on the critical nature of this due to the loss of capital uh, that was presented to the administration. That was one of the reasons that this needed to go forward uh, very, very quickly. Um, it was also at the request of, of um, uh, yeah, it was it was a high priority of of the administration to put this in that time frame, uh, and that's and that's really the. Are you saying that that you were not aware? I mean, what I heard you say was that that the process was ongoing. Uh, and it was considered to bring that you were going to bring it to the October meeting, but it was not brought to the October meeting. So the October city council meeting. No, I'm talking about our October commission. Correct. It was not. It was not. Uh, we were not prepared to do that because this was not finalized on the negotiation. Was it foreseeable that it was going to be finalized? before the commission meeting based upon the timeline? As, as the mayor said, and as I said at the city council meeting, uh, we were prepared to bring this into our 2024 timeframe. That has changed and uh, both the information received from the Air National Guard as well as us created the priority of the administration to bring this to city council meeting.
So, so what, just to weigh in, in in Nick's defense, like the council agenda is set by the council president with input from the administration. We we respond, you know. I that's why I'm saying I I think it was a miss by the administration to not afford sufficient time for this body to weigh in on it. But at the end of the day, we did have an opportunity. You know, we could have convened a special meeting, and we you know were not able to get a quorum. So, I mean, I, well, we can point fingers about why it was late. We did still have sufficient time to convene a meeting of the airport commission and weigh in. And we elected not, or we, there was not sufficient, you know, people that were interested in doing that. And, and I'm not saying who knows, I mean, time commitments too short, whatever it is what it is, but we did have an opportunity to weigh in and we elected not to by not having a quorum that wanted to move forward with a special meeting. Any other comments on this topic? I guess I'll, as chair, I'll conclude that I, I agree with what Chip and Robert had to say. I do think it is a miss that this body did not consider this. Um, I do regret that we could not get enough people who were interested to actually have a meeting to have a discussion on it. I guess I'm partially okay, given how I, what I saw at the city council meeting, where there was two hours of public forum with proponents and opponents. The debate amongst the city councilors was tremendous. Chip, as you noted, they have the authority to renew the lease, we, we do not. So while I do think it was a miss, I do think that the public process at the city council meeting itself was well served. All right, commissioners, anything else on commissioner items? All right, we move on to item 10, which is follow up items. There's currently nothing on the list. Is there anything from this meeting that needs to be followed up on uh, next month? Hearing that, item 11 is adjourned. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved by Greg. Any seconds? Any seconds? All those in favor, see if I say aye. Hi. Any post? We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.